To me, the most striking visual image in this Parsha, Parshat Lech Lecha, is one that has always mesmerized artists, the stars in the sky. Although at this point in our story, Abraham has no offspring and seemingly no real plan for the future, God takes him outside and says, look at the sky and count the stars, if you can. So will be your descendants. Similarly, later in chapter 22, he says, I will multiply your seed like the stars in the sky and the sand of the shore. I've always been drawn to this memorable and powerful metaphor. On a simple literal level, the metaphor seems to be comparing the quantity of the stars to that of Abraham's descendants. But many commentators have suggested that we are meant to understand that God is also comparing the two qualitatively. Just as the stars are a source of wonder and awe, so will be the story of Abraham's descendants. Just as the stars extend far into the distant past and will exist long into the future, so will Abraham's descendants. Another message to Abraham and to us may be that things are not always what they appear. While stars seem minuscule from a distance, just a dot, and only a tiny fraction of them are even visible to the human eye, in reality, they're infinite and powerful. So will be Abraham's descendants. In Tehillim, in Psalms, it tells us that God determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. Each star is unique and individual. So are each of Abraham's descendants. It's a good metaphor because the night sky has always provided people with perspective, inspiration, and an experience of the divine. Even Vincent van Gogh, despite his hatred of organized religion, is known to have written, when I have a tremendous need for, shall I say the word, for religion? So I go outside at night to paint the stars. Interestingly, although Starry Night is probably the most recognized piece of art in the world, Vincent van Gogh himself calls it a failure. Van Gogh also said, for my part, I know nothing with any certainty, but the sight of the stars makes me dream. Inspired by Van Gogh, many other artists tried to capture the mystery of the night sky. Georgia O'Keeffe may be best known for her flowers, but she also painted the stars. The colors here are clearly closely related to that of Van Gogh's. But in her vision of the stars here, painted in the wide open skies of the West, there is surprisingly an orderly geometric structure. But of course, Van Gogh and O'Keeffe were not the first artists to be fascinated by the stars. For thousands of years, the stars were a central image in Aboriginal art. As nomads, the Aboriginal people took a lot of notice of nature and especially of the stars in their storytelling and daily activities. These are all works of contemporary Aboriginal artists who are trying to follow in this ancient tradition. And I just love them and think they're amazing. <laughs> this style, dot painting, reminds me most of Avraham the Nomad journeying under the vast desert sky. Kids generally get excited about stars. So if you're working with children, this is a great topic to explore. They will never forget this metaphor if you partner your learning with artwork or handicraft or baking. Just as last week, we saw the rainbow after the storm. In the darkness, may we always find the stars. Shabbat Shalom.